Hey now, welcome to the Wake Up Tucson show. When you hear Elvis, Aaron Presley, that means we're in the second hour of the show. If you missed the first hour of the show, uh, I love our audio guy, Malta Joe, is making weird sounds in his mic, doing a sound test while sound I'm check. talking. Sound check, check, check. He's a pro. Good morning. He's Good a morning. pro. Good morning, Joe Gauchi, Malta Joe. How are you, sir? Fantastic. It's so good to be here. Thank you so very much for having me and the Malta Joe Pastizzi experience. Absolutely. Uh, if you missed the first hour, KBY.com, I talked about my, uh, my adventures driving in the motorcade for Vice President Pence yesterday. You know, man. And so as all of you were cursing the roads being closed, if you saw the second van, that was me gumming up the works for you. Did they? So, so you had press in there. I you did. had like Washington and East Coast press yeah. in there. Grumpy, with you. grumpy national press from back. And it was I, a these, van. I know these. I grew up in New York. These are yeah. I, these are my people. So I know did, exactly so, how grumpy so they it are. Was, it was like was like the door open in the back with the guy with the camera and he was filming everything as you went along. Uh, what happened was the best. I knew they were going to be total dorks when they opened up the side door and just came in and didn't say a word. It was just like, well, we're the press. We're the we're, nice. We're the East Coast. There press. was one guy. You know who the nicest we guy was? Like this this guy is not going to surprise you. The nicest guy was from Canada. See that? He's like, hey there, I'm from Canada, eh? and I said, <laughs> uh, I just want to tell you, we're big fans of maple syrup and hockey here at Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, so are. congratulations. So uh, we're hanging out here uh, on a food Friday. This is something we've done for ten plus years. Yeah where we try to feature a local food, restaurant, experience. We've done distilleries, vineyards. Uh, and I will tell you why. Now, first and foremost, before I continue blither-blathering, you need to go to the KVOI.com page and hit watch, and you'll see Malta Joe and I in HD 4K. Wow. I mean, this is... This is like uh, Brad Pitt ad Astra, but we're in a, we're in a studio together. <laughs> um, years ago... I had a friend of mine, a still friend, and he worked for Wine Spectator magazine. I, want, I like to refresh this story. It's very important. And uh, a guy who owns Wine Spectator, Malta Joe, is a guy named Marvin Schenken. Mm -hmm. Classic New Yorker, old guy, the beard, the whole thing. And he also owns Cigar Aficionado. Oh. So in those days, instead of letters to the editor, it was letters to Marvin. And so, so, you know, so in Wine Spectator, they do blind taste tests and ratings of wines from all over the world. And they give them a score from 1 to 100, 100 being great. Okay, perfect. And so they put it in the magazine, and then there's a little postcard that you can carry around with you if you want to take it to your local wine shop to see if it matches up with these great ratings. So someone said, Dear Marvin, could you, I wonder why you did not print the reviews of the wine that scored less than 70. And I can't say one of the words, so I'm going to have to substitute it. Life's too short to drink crap wine. Period. Thanks for listen Thanks for reading, Marvin. That's the answer. And so, when it comes to your discretionary income to buy food or vi or vino or whatever, right? To p have a little pleasure of life at the table or go out to a restaurant. Life's too short to eat crap food. And we are blessed to be in a community that has so many varied options of so many varied cuisines and so when this guy comes on my radar introduced to us by a mutual friend we'll give him a little shout out here tim at lens autos right at alexander do you yeah. want to you want to you want i to, got my, my, my last the car that i just got it from lens auto did oh, Lenny. Did you work with Tim or I somebody? I sure did. See? Worked with Tim and the owner of Brian, yeah. Tim Vimmerstadt okay. is his name. And you were looking for a pickup truck to pull your uh, your food trailer. I was. It was um, a quandary on how big of a truck I actually needed. Because at that time, I didn't know how big the new Pastizzi Express <laughs> was going to be. <laughs> the builders up in Phoenix said, yes, we're going to build this for you. And they kept sending pictures, and it was getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier and I couldn't buy a, tr a truck s too soon because it kept growing. Correct. And then um, I was introduced to Lens. Okay. And um, Tim and uh, he narrowed it down. This is what you need. We're going to look for this. We're not going to do it quickly. We're going to take our time and I promise you by the time your food truck is ready, we'll have the perfect truck for you. And he delivered. He nice. delivered in stars. I got a 2500 Ram diesel at 2018 
it laughs when I hook up the Pastizzi Express to it. It doesn't even care. Where are we going? Are we going to Sedona today? Great. Flagstaff, let's go hit that mountain. No problem. I've never had a worry with it. So part of the varied options that you have culinary-wise, all of a sudden, you come on my radar through Tim with this magical thing called Pastizzi. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Goomba from New York. I'm wearing my Italia 1984 national team soccer mm-hmm. uh, t-shirt today. Looks beautiful. Thank you, sir. And... Um, Tell us, everyone who just came, you know, just tuned on for the first time ever in their life on 1030 The Voice, local news and talk, what is a pastizzi for the, for the rookies out there? Pastizzi are the street food of the island of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea. Here, you have pas- uh, pizzerias. <laughs> on Malta, we have pastizzerias. <laughs> you, you go out and get yourself some pastizzi. You can actually get pizza in these pastizzerias, but people prefer the pastizzi. You go gotcha. out... Get a few for yourself, talk to your neighbors, and have some coffee while the kids are waiting at home for their pastitsi. This is, this is what it's about. There, this is what it's about. Um, every, it's on every street corner there. Here, in America, I'm the only one doing this commercially. Here in Tucson, Arizona, and the people in t- of Tucson have really embraced the pastitsi experience. It's new food. It's a new culture. What's well, Maltese? I'm going I'm to go out for Maltese food. I mean, you're used to saying Chinese food, Mexican food. Right. Um, but it's something new on their lips. You should hear the people when they try to say pastizzi. And it, it takes them a few, two, few chances and a few syllables come out, pastizzi or something. But they get it and they take one bite and then they're hooked. They keep coming back for more. So Malta, being where it is, right, feels like an aquatic crossroads of the Mediterranean. Is that, is, that an, uh, is that an appropriate uh, description? It certainly is. It has a lot of history to it throughout the centuries. Um, every um, nationality has, had owned it at one time. Um, it's right in the middle of the Mediterranean. When you're traveling there, when the Mediterranean was the center of the world. Sure. It was very important for you to know where the next piece of land was so you could stop and get water and food on your ships to keep going for trade and all that. And Malta was that place. If you um, had Malta and you had power over it, you were able to do very well with everybody else who wants to come on the island and resupply themselves. So what is, so f- from the different influences on Malta, how does the pastizzi get born? I believe the pastizzi was born because it's a very simple recipe. Water, flour, salt, and you're th- they had that. They had grains, um, they had salt from the sea. They harvested salt right from the sea. Um, they had water on the island at that time. And um, they were able to make this phyllo dough from scratch pretty easily. And um, the fillings with cheese, they had goats, they had cows. And it was a very simple food. It was a peasant food. Right. As, as it really is today, it's a common man's food. It's, it's a low cost and um, it's easy to make if you know how to make it. Well, every, 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 every cuisine of the world has that handheld turnover-esque thing, mm-hmm. right, to carry, right, or eat. Yes, Easy and, and on the go. Correct. Whether it's, you know, Cornish uh, pasties or different things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I've always told you this when you first came on. For any of you, I'm holding up the plate to the video right now, uh, is the idea that this, the way this phyllo is, because we've the, the phyllo from our friends in Greece, right? Mm-hmm. But the way this is formed always reminds me of the kind of Sicilian... Italian sfogliatelle or sfigadelle, as we say in the old days. Yes, the sfigadelle. Right, Absolutely. and that's what it, the, the way it's kind of layered and the way you do it. That's what it reminds. It reminds me of a very pa- savory sfigadelle. Yes, that starts with an SF. Just to blow your mind this morning. And the sfigadelle is a, a dessert, full yeah. of sugar and delicious and wonderful. Yes, and um, it's adapted probably from that process. Yeah, I mean, there's no sugar whatsoever in mine. I'm a, it's a savory type of a business model. Um, and people also come up to me and comment on the shape of the pastizzi, um, referring it closely to um, an area on the female anatomy. I'm like, well, this is how they always made it for centuries. They, you know those Maltese, the one-track minds. Good sense of humor in, the, in, in Malta, as we like to say. There's a great Everybody Loves Raymond about uh, a piece of artwork that Marie did in ceramics class. Yes. Thank you very much. Right. Now, um, so you have your food truck. Now you go to Malta Joe on. Uh, well, what's your website first and foremost? I'm going to bring you back for another segment. But what's the what's the website for Malta Joe? MaltaJoe.com. Very clean and simple. Um, you go right there. The store is right there. You could order directly online and uh, hear the story. Read the story of um, how uh, in three years only, 
I've been selling Pastitsi nationwide shipping, and I was able to save enough money to build the Pastitsi Express in a quick three years. It's really amazing. So Joe, what I love about Joe's story, right, is this is his, like, sec- this is his second career. Right, Joe was a expert, very sought after audio recording engineer in the New York City area. Yes, for 35 years, a, stu- a sound designer. And he worked on the uh, Nickelodeon show Doug. Yes, from beginning to end, every single episode I worked on Doug. Some Ren and Stimpy, some Rugrats. Ren and Stimpy. Some of them. When I had the the pleasure of working with Billy West, and he had no time to go to the regular studio. He was working with me on Doug. He was the voice of Doug. I didn't realize he was the voice of Doug. Certainly. He was the Billy original Billy West voice of, yeah. is a manic genius. He is a genius, and <laughs> I was very proud and honored to work with that man. And when they gave him a call, they needed an update on one of the lines. So he, they read wrong or changed the script. I was working with him. He said, Joe, let's do the script. I said, let's get to work. You would know Billy West uh, from, he's the Red Eminem. He's one of the M&M's. He is the Red M&M. Red M&M. Yes, Red he, M&M. Is. Yeah. he is a uh, fry on Futurama. Yes. Actually, he does so much stuff. It's and the scientist. Uh, oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. And the dad. He's I mean, versatile. The, the, the uncle. Just, just uh, shout out something to him. Hey, I need this kind of character. He'll give you three or four different ones. Billy that's West right. attempted to do a podcast. And it's literally the greatest verbal mind dump ever. He just he can't stop. Oh, I have to find it. So, and he's, a, he's a great interview. I've heard him on Mark Maron's WTF. He's pretty good. And then um, the guy who plays uh, <laughs> Pinky on Pinky and the Brain. I can't believe. Uh, yeah. oh, yes, I, yes. He has a podcast called Talking Tunes, and mm-hmm. it's only yeah. voice actors. And the one with Billy West is off the wall. Oh, it must be for sure. I have to listen to it. All right. When we come back, part two. With Mo- oh, look at that. Oh, crunch. This is this is against all radio. He's crunching pastizzi oh, on the microphone. Oh, right. Hold on. It's like mm. a pastizzi version of Jaws going mm. on right now. Mm. We're hanging out with Malta Joe. We're going to find out about the varieties of, <laughs> varieties of, of uh, pastizzi. And then I told him uh, when I saw him at the party last night that we needed some... Um, some, some like a travelogue of going to Malta. Yeah. Like, what's this place all about? So, if I stop off on the boat, what, what are we going to see? I was thinking of him a couple of weeks ago. My son and I were watching a mystery science theater called fi- Final Justice with the not so great uh, Joe Don Baker chasing a mafioso, Italian mafioso, and he has to travel and chase him down on location in Malta. Well. And watching a very obese Joe Don Baker running through the streets of Malta. A lot of hills. It's mystery science uh, gold. Gold. It's gold, Jerry. Gold. 1030 The Voice. Local right. news and talk. Sounds like my good friend Jimmy Smith. You're right. This is the walk on the wild side. It's a no Joe Jazz Friday. 724 in the morning, you're on Wake Up Tucson. Remember, we got our good friends from Bloomberg and CBS News coming up at the bottom of the hour. We're hanging out with Malta Joe. Good morning. Malta Joe. Uh, remember, MaltaJoe.com. Not only can you find out where he's going to be at various events in the Pastizzi Express, but of course, you can, he universe. ships it all over the planet. These things, <laughs> and people are asking for it. We wanted to come to Canada. We wanted to come to Mexico. I'm like, okay, it's going to sit there for a while, but we'll get it to you. Are you shipping pastizzi to Maltese in in Mexico? I got a phone call yesterday <laughs> from a man in Vegas, right, who was preparing to order frozen pastizzi from Malta to get it to his cafe in Vegas. A man in New York, his friend, said to him, "Wait a minute." I heard of a guy in Tucson, Arizona, making pastizzi. Find that guy. Why would you have it shipped all the way from Malta? It would be ruined. It would be crazy. It would be expensive. I remember this dream started, if you remember Joe's first interview on the show, you were making these at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. You got a little nostalgic. Yes. My mother's cookbook. I opened up my mother's cookbook after making uh, my mother's Christmas cookies right. for my family. All the cookies were made. I had a lot of dough left over, a lot of flour. I turned the page, and there were these. There was my mother's recipe for pastizzi, which was actually lost to me for two, two or three decades. I didn't wow. make them at all, and I, my eyes opened wide. And that very night, I started making pastizzi every day till I perfected the recipe. Wow. Her recipe, but she gave me the recipe to make twelve. Oh, Here, sure. some for your family. You're going to make twelve, and it still took two days. The filo dough needs to chill. Right. I needed to make 300 to 400 a day. 
Right. So I booked a trip to Malta. Wow. I went to go see my family, and in that time, went to different pastizerias to ask them, can you please help me? I'm from America. Here's my card. I want to make pastizzi in America. No one believed me. They thought I was going to take their recipe and open up another shop on the corner sure. where competition's fierce already. You'd be sure. crazy to open up a pastizzeria. American capitalist animal. pig right. trying to rip us off. Until I found one gentleman, an owner of a, a shop. He said, uh, I know your uncle, and I knew your grandmother. Wow. I'll have you come here next Tuesday, and I'll show you what I know under one condition. He said, you bring your plane ticket home with you. If you don't bring that plane ticket home, I'm not letting, I'm not letting you in the door. So I got there Tuesday morning. I even bought a little chef outfit in the Maltese store. I looked like a door going on in there because everyone was in their T-shirts and dirty. And uh, I showed him my ticket. He said, come on in. 7 o'clock to 4 p.m. I learned everything I needed to know over and over again. We made 800 pastizzi in that one day, from scratch from the dough all the way to filling them and freezing them. Wow. And, with, and I, the man who was teaching me did not speak a lick of English, so, but he still communicated. He said, what's this? And I already had it in my mind, my process of how to do this. It was now expanding it. And that's how I came back to America and was able to make them on a commercial scale. Look at you. Look and, at you. Sir. Now, we're going to run out of time. I don't run out of time. So there's a couple of things here. One, Joe is in the Pastizzi Express. We're never going to get the facts and figures today, but I appreciate your prep. Um, you are at various events and places all over Tucson now. Yes. Um, every weekend, I'm at the Steam Pump Farmer's Market on Saturdays. Oh, very nice. And that's from 9 to 1. And on Sundays, I'm at the Rieto Farmer's Market. Steam pumps in Oral Valley, for you folks who don't know. That's right. And it's uh, just north of the Home Depot on Oracle and First. Yes. And uh, the Rieto is by the racetrack. Very nice. Those are my two mainstays. I'm always there every Saturday, every Sunday. And um, during the week, I'm at various breweries in the evening. Very you, good. You could imagine people mm -hmm. having a good time in these wonderful breweries Tucson has. They have the best breweries, the best beer. I come rolling in. No one wants to drive away. They, they walk outside, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and they see pastizzi. They're smelling it. The, the, it's wafting into the bar, and um, they start eating. It's, it's like the zombies that come on out. <laughs> they want something to eat. Another thing real quick, of course, he makes these, freezes them, ships them, all right? So the, also the idea locally, we've had, we've had Wakey's call you up and order these things because they're having a party or something like that, and they're just easy to reheat. And you look like a million bucks. As a matter of fact, people, how morbid this might sound, people are um, putting it in their last requests for their funerals. I want pastizzi at my funeral. Oh. I want it at my, my marriage. I want my daughter's marriage wedding to have these. Oh, it's, my it's, it's, God. It's spreading like wildfire. Check out MaltaJoe.com for more. Joe, good luck, and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you very much, Chris. Goodbye, America. <laughs> Malta Joe, check him out. Bloomberg CBS coming up next. 1030 The Voice, local news and talk.